Now I'm going to produce for you a great watercolour picture now. It's fairly simplistic, a lot of sky, a couple of boats, some trees, rocks, water and distant hills. Now these are the materials I'm going to be using. I'm using a selection of paint brushes including a half inch flat brush which I shall use for the sky. My set of watercolour, these are Winsor & Newton 24 set of watercolour paints. I've got some Chinese white which you'll see me use straight away and uh, I use it a special way. Pencil to draw it out with, all oh, I've already done that. Uh, a rubber in case I want to rub anything, just for instance if I wanted to erase just some of the lines that might interfere I can use a, an eraser for that. The water is ready, prepared. So, and also the most important, the tissue. And you'll see me use that again immediately because I use it in the sky. So we're all ready to go. So let's get this underway with the sky. Now we're gonna do the sky first. And that is probably the most difficult part of this. Now, let me, sh let me show you how I prepare that. First of all, lots of water in your selected palette. Always make up more than you think you're going to use because what you don't want to do is run out halfway through. A small picture like this is not quite so bad but if you've got a large picture then you really would have to put a lot into it. Now then I'm going to use a couple of blues here. They're, they're virtually the same colour so it doesn't matter really whether you use one or two. But it's nice to have a mixture and you don't want the mixture to be too strong. That I think is probably about right. And make sure that you mix it up well. You don't want any little bits flying around. And that looks as though it's pretty good to me. Now the other thing is, we I use a bit of Chinese white. Now I have got a white here. I can use that, but I prefer to use a tube. It's up to you. The, the, the Winsor Newton box I've got here, the 24 colours, is... Um, has quite a good range in it, it has got a white in it. But nonetheless, I still use a little bit. You don't want too much of that, just a little bit. And what you do is you agitate that, like that, and mix it with that. It's a nice idea just to leave some unmixed. You see the difference it makes? Now, I'll mix that up, and then what I'll do then, I, um, I'll then transfer it from there, to here and I'll show you that but I'll show you that in a separate operation. Now before we start you've got to make sure you've got bunched up tissues here, really important. And keep one in your hand. Now we've got to be fairly swift. The thing you've got to do here is turn this upside down folks. Now why is that come? Well the reason is that all the drips will go down here, it won't run onto the picture. That's the way I do it anyway. Not many people do, but I do. No, I've got that nicely ready to go. Now, we've got to be fairly swift with this. I'll go over the distant hill as well. Now, I don't have to necessarily be too accurate with this because it's going to... Um, we're going to do the distant hill in the same colour or slightly darker one. But what we do want to make sure of is we cover up all the sky because we can't put it in again once it goes in that's it now you see I've got loads and loads of colour there so that, that's going to work really well now you need to be a little stronger on the top edge now you see that's going on really smooth at the moment. Now what I want to do is put this a little bit more, a little bit more blue, just a touch, along the top. Don't have to be very much, just a little, like that. Get rid of the bead that's there, otherwise that might run down on our picture, so just run, don't worry the fact that that's gone a bit lighter. Turn it around the other way, and now I've got to put the clouds in. How do you do that? Well, like this, folks. Get a bit of water on your brush. 
and dab it in. It's quite a light sky. I've not made this very strong. Good idea, really, to keep it like that. And then what you do is you bunch up your tissue and you dab it on like that. Now, what you get is what you get. You can't play around with it too much because it's beginning to dry out already. But you see how the clouds are forming? Get another bit of tissue, nice and clean. Keep it clean. Keep it small. Like that. Now that's lovely. I've got I've got one here that I like the look of. So let's put a little bit, a bit more in there. Now this is beginning to dry out. So I've got to now stop. Otherwise I'll ruin it. So come back in a little while and I'll show you what that looks like. But it's gone on nice and smooth, which is what we want. And then when we come back, I'll just debate the clouds a bit. I'll show you how I do that. And then we put the distant hill in. Now that's come up really well. While I've got the um, blue there, what I think I'll do is just add a touch more and we'll put the water in. Once again, remember that this is going to dry lighter. I'm going to make the distant hills a little stronger, a little darker. Now, the same rules apply though as with the sky. What we're going to do here is um, keep the flow going. Don't let it dry on us. Okay, good. That's going well. Now, continue that. Oh, yeah, really, it wouldn't have really mattered if I'd gone over the rocks because, to be fair, they're going to be darker anyway. Now, this is where I've got to be careful. I've got to come up to there and I've got the ship's detail there, so, or the boat, rather. I can feel it's just beginning to dry out. You can see it's mainly due, I've got to say, to the lights, folks. You wouldn't have the same problem that I've got. These, these uh, lights play havoc with us. Okay, now. Into there. I'm using a number six brush. But you can't afford to hang around. You've got to be fairly swift with it and keep it keep it wet. Again, this little feature here is going to be a lot darker. So Lovely. Okay, well, there we are. That's, that's that done. Okay, we'll leave that alone now. And uh, we'll just just go right up close to that pencil mark I've got. And there's just a little in here too. I might as well put it in while, while I think of it. Just a little bit of uh, water that's strayed. All right. Okay. Now, what about the, um, the distance hills? Well, what I'm doing now, I'm making this sort of like a greeny blue. I've added just a touch of green here. Just a touch of green, a touch of ochre. And mixing with the, with the blue. Now, let's put that in. Now, this can be done a couple of times. So, um, what I'm going to do here... Make it a little more ochre, I think, as well. Also, remember, while it's wet, you can add colour, like I've done there. Now, 
I'll do a little more of that to show you how that works. Maybe a little blue as well wouldn't be a bad idea. That's not going to show up that much. It, once it dries out, it will be a lot lighter than that. I like the blue in there. Let's put a bit more blue in. Yeah, that's quite nice. And I quite like the idea of leaving just a smidgen of light. Can you see it there? Let's see how we get on with that. Be a lot darker than that. All right, I've, I've, I've managed to get that just slight slither there, which I like. Now, see how that's drying out nicely now. Let's put a little touch of blue in there as well before we. to do it again I think that looks good to me just be a little, just a little darker there okay we'll leave that alone we'll let all of that dry out and then I'll come back and the next thing I'm going to do is these trees with slightly different um, techniques to those and I think what we'll do now we'll add a little sand again keep this very light Trouble that in. I'm using the number six brush. It holds more water. Same rules apply again though when you put got a lot of you can go right over that little boy there. You've got to keep the bead running. Don't let it dry out. It's quite nice now. I think that's just something a little bit stronger in places. Particularly when you're up against the banks. A little bit stronger than that, I think. And maybe some of this foreground area do with and certainly under there I'll be putting shadow on that anyway when we come to put some detail on later I think that looks good anyway we'll just see what that dries out like now you see I've started the trees over here and what I've done I've used a bit of sap green ochre a bit of that darker ochre there and just a little spot of black just a touch you don't want very much you just mix it on your palette and then you dip into that and let's do the other one. Don't want to make them all the same size, so I've got that one larger, and this one 
Now it doesn't really matter if they are slightly different colours. You can always dip into the green on its own and put a bit more green in. Like that. Okay. Now you don't have to worry quite so much about this drying as you did with the sky and the water. Here you've got time. And when you get to about there, we've got another tree that comes up here in a minute. I'll do that. But you can always put colour into it. Like just a bit of ochre would be nice. A bit raw ochre this time. Yeah. The other thing you can do is you can touch a little bit of the black in as well. So you get a bit of strength. You see how I've done that? You don't want too much of it, but they are dark against the background. Okay, the light's coming from this direction, so all the dark really will be on the other side. Now, the benefit to this is you can separate the trees. Let me show you what I mean by that. Now, this one here is in the foreground, so if we put a little bit of lemon yellow, you know, just activate that. I have got another trick in up the sleeve that I can show you in a little while. A little bit of that in, and just spot a little bit of that in here, like that. And what that does, that puts this tree in the foreground, that one in the background, see? With watercolour you don't have quite the same control that you do have when you're using, say, the pastel pencil, which is my great love. But I also love watercolour and uh, it's nice to ring the changes. So let me just carry on with that down to then I, I you don't want to see me do it all. But you see now we have no separation between those two. But if we put a little bit of black in there, just in there, you see now we have that you can see the difference and when that dries that would be a bit more obvious. Or you can make it more obvious by putting a little bit of lemon yellow in there. You see? That looks good, don't it? Well, in fact, I will do this other tree because you need to see as much as you can. I'm just thinking of video time. Job is My job here is just to show you what you need to do, not sit and watch me do the whole thing. But let's put a bit more black in here, a little bit more there. Okay, so you've got it in your palette there, so you can use that and dip in and out of it. So let's go up the other tree. You see, I didn't worry about the sky here simply because it's going to easily go across the sky. You see how nice and clean and crisp that is. What you don't want to do though is leave any of that white. Well, I say any, you could just leave a spot of it like if you want to. Like that. Let's carry on with that. Don't wait until you finish before you put the dark in. Put the dark in simply because it's wet and wet and it works really much better if you can do it like that. Don't need here to have any lemon yellow on that because that's going to be light enough. And again, every now and again, branch out literally. You don't make it all the same. couple of little spots like it makes it more interesting for one thing and you can see how this is going to react now when you get down to here we're going to have to make that a little bit darker and okay, let's just move down to here over this side of the tree we want it to be a little darker to set against the other one see this has got to, this has got to be in the background here so we've got to make this tree in the foreground and you'll see when I finish you'll see how that actually is working out. Do a bit more, a little bit more black there, dark. Now that's just coming on really well. You can see the shades in the tree. You're never going to get absolute detail, you know, you can't, but not with watercolour. Because you just can't keep going. But I get to the point now when I'm going to have to think about altering my situation here. See, now I'm going against that area now. Actually, I don't think I need to particularly worry about that. You know, I can, I can do that down there. I've lost my tree trunk at the moment, well, don't worry about that. We can make adjustments. You see how this is coming? I've just about got enough 
of my wash here to last me but I do like to put as you know a little bit of ochre in a little bit of dark and I want to make that darker on that side so let's get some more black and green so we can the black I think on its own might work there hmm. Yeah, that's, that's it. You have to work fairly fast when you're doing watercolour. You can't afford to go and have a cup of tea and come back and say, oh, it's all dried out. But it's looking good, isn't it? Let's, um, let's put a little bit of variation in here as well. I'm just thinking that if I can put a little bit of that ready ochre in there as well, might be nice. Now I've got to fill that up. I should have enough now to finish it. Now what I'm going to do at the bottom here, I'm just going to splinter it off a little bit so we can sort of imagine that we've got at the bottom, we've got some light coming through. It doesn't matter that you haven't put any colour on that. Yeah, black, black, a bit more black, just to put a little bit of extra strength in. That, that's lovely. Now at the bottom, you'll have it much darker here, so we can come from that and lead ourselves, especially there. Yeah, I've got a little bit of light there that it will show up if I make it a little darker. You might not even be able to see that. You're a little way away from this. I've had to draw back here simply because um, I wanted to show you how I dip and in out the palette. But as we move on, I'm going to come a little closer so you can appreciate that better. Now, I think I'm going to leave that alone. Well, that looks good to me. Now the other thing we've got to think about too is this ne next bit. Now this is the most difficult part of the picture in my opinion. Um, it's the rocks. You can't put them in, you've got to leave them out. So now I'm going to use the same palette that I've got for the trees, but I'm going to add some browns in there as well. That ready brown would look nice in there. But it's earth and it's also green, so we can't afford to ignore the green altogether so I have a little lemon yellow tucked up up here, up here so we can call on it and I can also dip in like that if I want to so I'd make it make sure that I've got plenty of of um, and the green you only just about see that I've just realized on the screen not easy to get everything in Anyway, let me go. Let's go for this. We've got um, we've got the colour, and as I say, I can dip in them these as I want them. Now, what I'm going to do now? First of all, I want to do a mild wash. So, and I want to make it slightly lighter than what we've got above. Now, that maybe doesn't look it there, but it will end up that way. Now, we've got our first rock. How do you go a rock coal? Well, what you do is go around it like that. See, like that. And leave it out. Another one. In fact, we do them all here. It's not quite so imperative that you keep the bead running here. If it starts to dry out, well, it starts to dry out. See, now doing what I'm doing now, you can see that I've left little white specks. Let's do another one here. Now, a rock can be all sorts of shapes, so you don't have to worry about the fact that you're not doing exactly the shape that you see on the reference picture you've got come down here there's a few big ones here so we'll just bring that in there and do it the way I'm doing it stabbing it in you can see the little bits of light and go around that one if you if you if you're clever you can also make a, a nice shape especially in the bigger ones now nearly done Now this is going to have to be a lot darker. 
eventually because we've got to set it against that just as the tree is. But we don't have to worry about it just yet. Let's just get this in first. Then we can come back. Have a little rock, a double one there, look, two. Now you don't have to put as many as I've got. You can just put a few if you want to. You don't, it's not important. I've got something here that I'm going to work with later on. Another double one there. There you go. That's, that's the first coat. Now these areas here will have to be dark, but we can put them in initially with the same colour. Also a nice idea just to leave a little gap there. You know, I don't want that. Not here we don't. I think we'll make that solid there. Now I'm using a number six brush here, but it's got a nice point on it. Even though it is large, you can work the point to give you quite a lot of detail. I'm going to go all the way along here with this, and you'll see that I don't overrun. Like that. And there. Not much there. I'm going to make it darker, so that won't really matter. But what would matter is if I spread this into the water. I'd have a problem. So I don't want to do that. I make that quite straight. That looks good, doesn't it? Now, what's what's next? Well, what's next is I wouldn't even worry about the box at the moment, but what you're going to do is put some more depth in. So I'm going to put some little brown and a bit of green. Now this time I'm doing it as I go. The first one was a sort of wash. But this one now needs to be just a little stronger. We can put different tones. We want it in there, even to the point where I haven't used this yet, but let's use this. This is a very dark brown. You know, we can put a little bit of that in as well. It's a little spot like that. Now you'll be amazed at what that looks like when we're finished. Right? Okay, let me carry on because um, here we, we've got if you find, like I did there, that's a bit green, you just put another colour in and subdue it. And this is when the rocks are really going to stand out. Now, just a bit of dark, I love that dark in there, so let's put that brown back in here and there. Now, I can take it off as well. Now, what I did then, I've got my tissue here, which in I better get another one it's clogging up. What I do is I do that, see, and then it just takes the water off it, and then I can just dip it in and take it off. You don't have to settle for what you've done there. But with watercolour, you get what you, or you have what you get, what you got. You can't, you can't fiddle around too much. It won't allow you the time. That's a bit of black there. I've got no, that's a bit of brown. Now that's a nice colour. Let's see what happens with that. This is when we can put the edge in there. Like that. Now we don't want to keep it like that, so we'll just now weaken it a little. Oops. Now see that's a happy accident. That worked out quite well for me. My arm jogged, but it's quite dark, so now we want to spread that back into the rest. I've got the idea that coming down there. Now we've got a distinct line there which I wanted, and that will find its way around eventually to over here. Anyway, I think I've done enough now, so I can break off and I'll complete this exactly the way I've showed you and remember we have to leave those rocks we can't interfere with them too much in the end they won't end up the shape 
that they started. There's another one there, little ones. Okay, so I'm going to break off now, but I should be carrying on doing exactly what I've done there. And then I can come back and I can show you how we can put the locks in. Now I'm going to show you how to do these rocks. I've already done one, as you can see, and um, I'm going to do the rest. Now what I do there is I put a little bit of black, and just, just do it so that you can see me mixing it up there. There we are. I'll, I'll, I'll do it up here. A little bit of black. A bit of white. Now I've got white. You can't see me mixing that, but... There's some bit of white as well, and that gives us a greyish look, right? So now we can just put it on like that. Just on the base. Remember the light's coming this way, so it's going to hit the top of the rocks. And we've got probably got enough to finish these off. Look. Now that's pretty impressive, isn't it? I mean, I'm making it look easy. It's not as easy as I as you think. Now we don't want it just be be um, grey. We want some brown as well, or other colours in there. So I'm going to put a little spot of green here as well. Sap green, or viridian, whatever green you've got, and a little bit of brown as well. Do these as separate like that, you see. So you've got now, I oh, couldn't see that. Sorry, folks, you can't see that. Um, let's move it over along a little bit hard to get the palette in and keep you close. So anyway, I've, I've put some brown in there as well. So we've got brown, we've got green. So we can dip in and dip out as we want. Now here we want to... See that little bit of brown really gave it a lift, didn't it? Just a touch. Keep the light as much as you can. I'm going to show you how, in a minute how I got that. Bit of brown. Don't fiddle about too much though. I warn you that's not going to work very well. We do need some depth as well. Uh, oh, I didn't do this one. Hold on. A little bit of green in that as well. Yes, we do need some depth in it as well. So before I come back in here, um, I wonder whether I could use my, my paintbrush here. I've got a, a one that's not, this is a number three. Um, now the difficulty really is you can't, it doesn't hold some, quite so much water. So what we've got to do here is um, see if we can get some more depth in here and there as we go down. Now that acts, first of all, it, it's got a nice tone that mixes well but also of course you get the light coming in better let's just carry on with that doing it all over and I suppose the key to this is be sparing to start off with you want to go back in again and do more the more random you can make it the better it will look too and uh, I'm going to go along there in a minute with the same colour. And see all those little bits. Now, I don't think I want to do too much more. Just a, a spot down here where we've got some depth behind those rocks. Now, it makes those rocks stand out more, doesn't it? And the other thing we can do is to separate them now. So let's separate that one from that one. Put a little bit more depth in. As this one's close up to us, we need to perhaps a little more detail there. And this is a, example, a good example of what I was trying to say there. By putting that depth there, like that, you see how the rock stands away. 
Yeah, I think that looks really nice. I wouldn't do too much more than that. I think you could do, let me just see whether this works. If it works for me, it works for you. If it doesn't work for me, don't do it. You can put just a little spot of lemon yellow in. Now this is raw, I've, you can't see me doing it, but I'm, I'm making it quite strong. Now that does work, look. You see how it does, this adds a little bit more interest to it. Now the rocks are really standing out nicely now. There's one there, which I've just seen. Now if I was to see this one here, you can't really make it out, but if I was to make that uh, a little darker with my black and my green and my brown, and come underneath there. You see, now we've got a rock we didn't have before. Okay. I don't want to lose all that light though. So I'm not going to do any more to that. I like that. I think that looks great. The only thing I think we could probably do there, now looking back on it, there's not enough depth in there. So that's a question of green and black together. And see if we can do this just a little bit more. I did have a tree trunk at one time. Well, it's gone. Don't worry about that. We just put a little bit of depth in. Like that. And that's a pretty... I don't think we need any more than that, to be honest. It looks good. I was going to show you something else as well, which I might do. Um... Well, I've got your attention. I've got a... Well, this is a lemon yellow. Just a spot of that on there. Now, this is out of a tube, folks. Um, you can get any lemon yellow will do. I've actually chose to get uh, an artist quality one. But uh, don't worry about those. They are a bit more expensive. Now, with a finer paintbrush, this is a number one paintbrush. We dip into the yellow. First of all, put a little bit of water on it so it activates it. And then you can then, now this is tricky, but quite effective. Let's just see how it works. I think we might have to water it down a tiny bit more. You can put a little bit of lemon yellow on. Now, having done that, then get your green and oops, subdue it slightly so it doesn't become quite so bright. Now, I won't do any more, I just do that and we'll just see what that looks like. Then I can always come back to make sure that that's going to stay wet you just put a little bit more water on it and leave it and see how it looks when we finish as i say it may not work out as well as i hoped it would but let's just put a little bit i will do some because it, it would look better when i disappear with the paintbrush what i'm doing is taking the taking the um, surface paint off it a bit of green in there as well that will lighten up that side. Now you see it. I don't think we necessarily need it on that one. That's uh, I've made that quite light anyway. But it's this where you've got the you want the light. And conversely, of course, you can always put just a little bit more depth on the side on the here where you want it a little bit darker. Anyway, yeah, you can play with this. Now we could probably go in between these to enhance that green a little more. Right, so I'm, I'm going to leave that alone now. I like that. What about coming along here now with my thinner paintbrush? I'm going to do the rocks now. This is the brown. Any brown will do, a little bit of black, a little bit of green. 
and we'll wander along here. I'm just wondering whether I might actually use my thinner paintbrush for this because we could do a little bit more detail. And again, every now and again, don't complete every section of it. Some of that would be nice to have some of that light coming through. Now you see I'm also changing shape as I go. Make that a bit bigger. And with the one Here we are. Make that a little bigger. Slightly different shape. You must have a little gap as well. Can you actually fill it in? That looks good. I don't think we need anything else. If I did, I would probably use just a little bit of brown. A bit of black and just pop every now and again just as I have done with the rocks and other things just a bit of extra weight like that now the other thing I can show you while I'm here is I hope you saw the end of that I don't know if you did I apologize if you didn't actually see that one but that's what it looks like right um, yes here um, I'm going to use my wider it's not that much wider but it will give me an opportunity to show you how you can just make this look a little bit more interesting just sort of almost dry brush it there so you get that sort of effect let's have a, let's have a little bit of color as well There you go, I don't even want any more than that. The only thing we do want and will want is shadow under the boats, but I think we'll do the boats first before I do that. And having done that, you then can use your, what any brush will do here, just to put some little bits and bobs you don't, you don't want a rock, rocky shore that's got no overspills, I call them. You can bring them, you bring, bring them right out if you want. You know, they can... It also works quite well if, you're, if you've got a wet surface that you're going into. Yeah, I think that looks nice. And let's do some more because I think that... I love the idea of this one now. You don't want it that pristine. But what, what you don't want, though, is the door to come out exactly the same. You want something to represent nature the best you can. Anyway, I should carry on doing a little bit more of that, but I think that that looks much better. And also, of course, it gives us weight behind and underneath those rocks in the foreground. There we are. OK, now I think what we do next it's the boat. Now I'm just applying a bit of other uh, seaweed and a bit of green on it. Don't want too much, just enough to sort of fill up what would be an empty space. And I'm using the green with just a little bit of depth in it. As we come a bit closer, we can be it's a little bit more bold with it. Yeah, I think that looks rather nice. I'll bring it closer to show you 
how I would finish this off now. And just a couple more. It's also nice to have a little corner down here so we can add a few bits of interest. I think that would probably be enough. Don't want any more. The further back we go, the smaller the reference is like that. I'll leave that alone because I think that's going to look great once I put the boats in. Now while I've got this colour in my hand, I'm going to do this over here. Now let me just make sure you can see that. Pull the picture over just a little bit, a little bit more. There you go. Now you'll be able, you won't be able to watch me dip in and out, but you can see how I'm going to work it. Now I'm going to, I've got a, quite a, a small brush here. It's one of my favourite brushes. It's a it's a number three, but it's a worn out number three. And sometimes, you know, when you're doing watercolour work, the older brushes, the older a brush gets sometimes, the um, better it is. Uh, that, that might seem strange, but I'm, what I'm going to do is make a, a little bit of brown. I'm, I'm mixing a little bit of brown with that greeny tone that I've got in here. And that should be just about right for me. I want to get it right. You check it out on the palette first before you put it in. Now, this is like a an old jetty. So we'll, we'll first of all put... It's got to be quite strong because it's got to go against the light water. Now, I'm just going to do this now. Now, you'll see what, I, what I'm getting at in a minute. It doesn't have to be too precise. But what we don't want is to leave any of the white there. Now, when you've done that, get your tissue and just press it on there. So it takes just a little bit off. Can you see that? Well, you probably can't, but it's just a little bit off. Now, there's another one across here. Well, it's an old jetty that has now been discarded. There we are. Okay, now that's fine. Right, again, just dab it with your with your tissue, just to take just a little bit off. All right, but now we can go back in now and put just a little bit of shadow on, same colour, just on those the areas where you'd have the depth. That's it. That's it. Finished. Well, I say finished, but um, there's going to be quite a bit of other work to be done. You've got to make it look rustic. Yeah. Let's carry on. This, this is fun. This is when it really gets fun. I've got to put some sh um, reflections in as well in a minute. I don't want to come too far. I think probably that's as far as I want to go with it. Squiggle the paintbrush around so it looks as though you, uh, you know what you're doing. The light that's in there is great. Little bits of light the paper showing through is good. It just needs a little bit more depth, so I'm just adding just a little bit more black to my paintbrush and just put a spot or two of depth in. Less is more, remember. The only thing I would do here is I would just sort of make it look a little bit so, you know, you've got a bit of weed and that draping down. You know, doesn't that look great? Now, as far as the water is concerned, we use the same colour, but we put a little blue with it. So I, I, you can't see it, but uh, I'm telling you what I'm doing. I'm just adding little bits of that to the blue. And what we do now is we can put in some reflections. You don't have to be too fussy with this. That's all we need. You don't have to be accurate at all. Just as long as you put something in that representing, we can do with just a little bit of depth as well in there. To represent and that's all we do great so that's that little bit and now the boat this is the boat that I've been looking forward to doing um, let's have a couple of things I can do first of all I can still use a similar mixture I've got I had for that uh, but this time I'm going to add just a little bit of um, Ready ochre to it. Now I'm saying ready ochre. Um, I can't remember the name of these. Now these colours I've got, and I'm going to put this in here again. The first colour this will be really the base colour. Now this is on top of 
like the it's a sale in other words there and we'll be putting that in in a second in fact I can do it now with the same color like that like that and it's like that now I want to leave you can imagine that now being a rolled up cell, but it needs a bit more depth in it. So just add, as usual, my just tiny little bit of black to that colour I've got already. And that will give me a little bit of depth. Just to put a little bit more strength. It's always best to leave it wanting slightly so that you can come back if necessary. Like that. Now I've got to put a mast of a ship in here in a minute, of the ship in a minute, so I should do that. But before we do that, let's look at the colour of the boat. Now we'll have a, a more de a definite colour now. I'll keep close up because you'd like to see this, I'm sure. Uh, this is like a that same ready ochre colour, but this time it's a pure colour. Now we can go in over the windows for the moment because the windows are going to be darker so we can make that solid like that and that is going to lighten up when I put my there we are now we can make it just a little stronger than that by this is when you do really need the smaller pink brushes We've got a little bit of extra strength there. And because the shadow is coming from this direction, we now make it a little darker there. Now, you can see how easy that was. All right? Leave that alone. And we'll come back to that in a second or two to put the windows in. And see how precise that is. Now we've got also the mask that comes down here is going to come into here. So we can just put a little spot there to see that we've got the end of the mask. Now how do we do the mask? Let me show you how you do that. Now ordinarily, I've said before that you could use a rule. Well, you, you can when you're drawing, but you can't when you're painting. So a nice sharp You've got to decide on the colour. You can't keep going over this over and over and over. So I'm now making the mask just a little darker by mixing some brown in with that colour that I've just used. So I'll have to go do a test run to make sure that I've got it right. OK, now here we go. I've already got the line there and this is how we do it. We, we, as fine as we possibly can. Now, hit here, I want it like that. I don't want it to be a solid line from here on. Now, you see how important the line that I put in, a pencil line that I put in originally. There we are, and that comes down to there, down to there, down to there, and ties up with what we've got there. And it doesn't really show up against that very dark rock so what we do there I think is there's a couple of things we can do I can in fact I will show you this I'm going to lighten that off in a minute but I won't do it yet now I want to go over again just to make absolutely sure I've got that to the right strength now that's good and it ties up down the bottom of there okay so that's that finished well I'll show you that in a second but what I want to show you is how we do this too. Now you could use the pencil line there if you wanted to, but I really do like to use it now. I'm just turning the brush round so that it actually is the thinnest I can get it. And I, it's just a whisper. Less than that, but it's still got a register. Like that. Right. Now, 
down the other side. If you're thinking, Colin, you haven't quite hit the line there. Uh, no, no, I haven't, but I couldn't stop. I had to continue. Otherwise, I'd have ruined the picture. But I'm going to show you how you can get out of that too. It's another little trick. I wouldn't expect this to be absolutely perfect, and you wouldn't want it to be. A watercolour is meant to be just a an impression. But you can see how this is now coming along. And by doing the way I'm doing it, keeping the, your, your hand on the paper, you're getting lovely. Now, I'm going to leave that alone for the minute. It's as good as we're going to get. Let's just put another couple of, um, just put a couple there just to indicate that we've got the beam. That could be just a little stronger now. There we are. Great. Now I can do the windows using the same colour and the same idea. You have to make these dark. You've got no choice. And one more in there. Tidy that up a little bit. It's a sail that's wrapped around the, the mast. So, in fact, we could probably, if I can spot a black now, just a little bit, and I'm just going to pop just a little bit of black in there just to give me some contrast. Right, I'll show you that in a second. I've got to wait until it's really dry before I try it. But let's have a look at the boat now. What I'm going to do is make it a green boat. Right, so first of all, uh, no, that's, that's not right. It's a little bit too green, so I'm going to mix another colour. That's better. Now you might think, well, why a green boat? Well, I could have made it a red boat, but I'm going to put a red pin line on it. So I just decided to have a green boat, but there you go. Now I'm just, again, just dab it off because that weakens it, you see? So we get a nice, still a nice colour, but it's not exactly Perfect. Now what we do now is just use the same colour I've used again, only just a little bit more brown on now. Now here I've got to be just a little bit more careful. To put a little bit of contrast in there. And I also, using the same colour with just a little more strength, I'm going to use the very finest part of this brush to put a pin line along the top edge. And just on that side, make it just that little bit stronger. And, because that's still wet. Okay. Now the bottom of the boat, that's gonna to have to be dark. I think what I'll do here is I'll use it a very dark brown. So, and I'm going to mix the brown with some of that black that I've used already. All I'm doing is, is using the same palette. Now that little bit there is a rudder that sticks out there. I'm going to put a pin line in on there in a minute, but that's it's a bit early. But now I can draw that in like that. It can be a little bolder now because I've got the line against the boat coming down here and that now can be a 
Now that's, again, do you remember I said that it's a good idea to leave a very little pin line there? Can you see it just between here and here? It's not very obvious, but it will be if I make that uh, just a spot darker. Remember, brown and black mixed together. Now, you have to take quite a lot of care over this because if I messed this up now and I went on to here, it would really completely spoil the illusion. So that's why I've gone a little quiet. As long as you follow the rules. Now, now I can show you that little pin line I was talking about. You see that? There. In fact, it would be made up a bit more obvious if I was to make that shadow just a little more obvious now. Great. Now, all of the areas I'm showing you, I will touch them up. They, they will be just a little stronger when you see them again just as it did with the rocks. Well, I'm showing you the basic idea, but really I do need to spend just a little bit more time on it, getting it as I want it. But basically that bottom of the boat is how I want it now. What about that red line that I want? Well, for this, now, this is a colour we haven't used yet, so I'm going to use a red. It's not going to be a brilliant red, but it will be... In fact, I'll put just a little touch of black in it as well, to quieten it down a little bit. Now, you haven't seen this, but let me just show that to you, and then I'll draw the line. Now, this is the colour I'm talking about. I used the red, uh, well, you can't see that, but I've used the red with just a little bit of black. And here we go. Once again, you've got to be absolutely spot on accurate following the line that you've already put it all right already drawn in and if you're doing it the line will be drawn in for you and i should do that on the line drawing Oof, you see nearly nearly went wrong there but if you did make an error you just leave it you try to correct it and you'll, you'll make a worse job of it. So what all I'll do there is just try to make that line just a little thicker so it compensates for that little hiccup I've made. Now that looks good. That's okay. Happy with that. I think what I might do, just out of interest, I might just put the, middle of the line along the top of that. And it pushes it up a bit, doesn't it? There you go. Good. Right, I don't think that I can do any more there. I'll just show you something I could try. If you've got a flat brush like this, let me just make sure it's uh, in the state of my rag. You see how important it is there? Now, now, what I'm going to do is just see whether I can get rid of that. Just to, What you do is you just wet it, take it off and dab it. There you are. I've got rid of it. That's risky. But you can see, it does work. Okay, so that's that. I've got one little boat to, to finish, and I've nearly finished it because it's now looking really good. But what I was going to show you is how to get rid of that. Now, if you've got one of these, if you haven't, you could use an ordinary rubber, but these are better. Let me show you how I'm going to get them. I'll come nice and close for this so you can see how I'm going to do it. Now, what I'm doing is using the softest part of this eraser, which is the pink, pink bit. And I'm doing over the whole thing. Now, does it mean I've got to use the colour again? Yes, it does. But I've got that graphite line that I put on originally removed. OK, so back to where we were before. We've got to now, and I should show you how I can correct that. Go back in with the same pen, same um, 
paintbrush and just go down again this time as careful as you can now when you get the line drawing you won't have these guidelines in I won't do I won't put them in because it's better for you to draw them with a pencil preferably a, a B or something like that that one's also just a little faint might as well make that a little bit stronger and that goes all the way down to there yes it's best to do to use that oh something else I was going to show I just remembered I told you that I was going to do something with that well I can let me show you how this works a little bit of water on your paintbrush right and you just emulsify this area now this is clever watch this just dab the water on and take it off with your see, see? you wouldn't know would you and what we can do then and I just give it a couple of minutes to dry off in fact if you just dab it a couple of times with your tissue and make sure that it's all dried off you can redo it again so back to where we were before with our dark green black mixture it's got to be quite dark too because we've got to go across that um, so I'm just mixing it right that should do it give it a go haven't got much to do we've just got to come from here down to there there we are now just a little more perhaps make sure we've got it as we want it and we are turn it around the other way and now we can see the mast very clever isn't it one other little thing while I've got this in my hand I've put a little it can be a little boy on here and then the, you see the graphite line that I've got there very faint isn't it that's what you need and then you just draw it in now I know a lot of artists would just leave the graphite line I don't like to do that I like to hope you saw all of that I'm turning the picture around and because I'm close up there's always a chance that I'd like to go out of your line and you're not being able to see what I'm doing and that's not too good is that when that happens now what I'm doing now is just making sure that we've got just a little bit of depth underneath that like that because you can't just put something like that in and not basically anchor it See, now that looks great. So there's one boat done, but we've just got the, the other little boat too. And once I've done that, basically that's the end of the picture. I think you'll agree that it's been a great little picture. I'll come away a bit for that so that you can see it, and then we'll we'll finish the rowboat off. Now, just before I finish the rowboat, there's a couple of little things I want to show you. Just make sure that's nice and clean. I've got a little mark here which must have been a little splash so what do we do about it we well, can't get it off so what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn it into a little bird see another one down here see? any can you see any more looking at them I think we need do you know we could leave it there's nah, another one I've just seen another one up here yeah just here there we are now doesn't that look pretty I think do you know from an artistic point of view we do need another and I think I'm just I haven't got a splash mark now but I'm going to put one in here It, 
it's just something that um, no I think that's perfect four was fine three was not wouldn't work okay now we've got a little bro- robo to do and I'll bring you really close on that now this boat I'm going to make it sort of white really but with grey so let's put the grey on first I don't want it lily white but that would be the colour now same colour what I'm using is a little white from my palette and just a little spot of dark black so in other words making it like grey now I'm going to do this gradually what I want to do here is put the shadow basically in Yeah, that's the shadow, or well, one of them. And we can do this in gradual stages. I'm going to leave that to dry off because I, that's got to be fairly strong. Inside here, now here we've got, uh, let me make it a little stronger. I'm going to, I'm using my very fine brush again, just to draw in the seats. like that and because I also want that to be in between there I want to keep the seats light but the other area is just a little darker it makes sense in a minute for you now I don't want that to dry too quickly so we do that you see how that, that works? Just to, You put it on, then you take it off, and that just leaves you just the shadow, basically, that we want. And do the same thing here. Now, why didn't I do all of that at the same time? Now, the reason I didn't is because if I'd have left that any longer, it would have dried out too strong. So let's come in with that again. There we are. Now, you see how we're going now? Now, what we've got to do inside there is make it just a little different colour slightly. So I'm going to make that a little bit of ochre. Now, I've mixed a, a couple of ochres together there. And this is what I'm, what I'm looking for here, just a little bit inside there. Because I've dried that off inside, and I do the other side as well. And now I can do it all like that. And then using some fresh just water now, I'm just putting the water on the top. Now what's happening is the colour from here is mixing with the water above. See, got it? Still a long way to go. But we're getting there. Now I've also got to put a bottom on the boat. And I think what I'll do here is I'll make this a blue, a dark blue. I've got lots and lots of blue in my palette from the sky. So I'm going to mix that. But I'm also going to mix a bit of black with it. So it'll be a blue, but it'll be black. And that, that will turn into a very dark blue. So here we go. And I've got a line here, so I've got to draw my line in. which I shall do first of all. I'm going to think of the contour of the boat now. As it drops up here, it comes to, say, about there. Fill that in. And this time it's going to be darker than the sandbank that it's resting in. Well, it's half resting on the sandbank there and in the water. So they'll be come down there like that. And up the other side. So what we've got, we've got a reflection that's going to go into the water in a minute, but that looks good to me. I think we can safely say that that is maybe make it just a little bit more like that. Great. 
No, I can't really touch that at the moment. So what I'm going to do is going to make that inside area just a little stronger because we've got some shadow to put in there now. Shadow there. And it will be at that angle because the light's hitting it at that angle. Now we're getting there. I just wonder whether I can make it turn. Yes, I've got a little area at the back there which is here, which has got to be a darker shade of the grey for the boat. Touch it. Well, we're, we're nearly there. Now I think I can afford now to do this front bit now. Um, mixing a bit of grey and a grey coin. So it's white, black together, mixing the same colour that I use for the boat, but with just this time a little bit stronger. And see how that looks. Mm. That's okay. It's a little blue, but that, that really, I don't think, matters very much. No, that's all right. That's fine. I still want the seats to be that colour, but I think we're going to use a little artistic licence now and draw in. I don't usually like drawing lines, but sometimes you have to, to make it work. So I'm going to draw a very, very thin line, giving me the outline of the rowboat, like that. And using the same colour, with just a touch more depth, we come in here, like that, and here, like that. And here like that, what a difference that's made. And if I can get it in, I'm also going to have another line in there. I, this only works because I've got a very fine brush that I'm using. Yeah, that, that will do. And a little darker in there. I hope you've enjoyed this picture. The picture itself is um, taken from a pastel pencil picture which I did many, many years ago. And I was thinking, well, wouldn't it be nice if I could do something in watercolour? I did another picture, which is actually on YouTube, which is a freebie, that was... Hambledon Mill, and that has had the most views on my YouTube site. Now, this isn't going to be a freebie, this is part of our. I'm just making sure that I've got that dark enough in there. And once again, it's an idea just to bring a little bit of depth on the edge of that. Yes, have the mill I was talking about. Well, that's been a very successful picture for me. And it came out more or less the same time as the Boats in Landscape, which is this one. Now I've got to make that darker now. That, um, this area here. Oops, yes. mistake. Let me show you how I get out of that. 
it's the same idea as up there. You just use the water, dry it, and then dab it off. I told you originally how important this was. Well, you can see now. In fact, I think what I might do here too, now I don't do this often, but I'm just squeezing a little bit of Chinese. Let me just show you from a distance. Now what I'm doing is squeezing just a little bit of Chinese white on the palette. Like that. Don't much of it because I'm not going to use very much of it. Wash the brush. Make sure it's clean water. And agitate it so that we've got quite a bit of it there. Now I'm just going to see whether I, this will work. Don't often do this, but it might just work for me. Put a bit of Chinese white on top of the white that I've got there, which will make it just that little bit stronger. Now, you shouldn't do this with watercolour, folks. All right. However, I've done it many times before, and I've seen professional artists do it as well. So it's permissible. It's permissible if it works. And as you can see, if I do half of this, you'll see what I'm talking about. Keep, keep the consistency just right. You've got to be careful here not to make it too strong. You see, you're constantly redoing, re-going over. It's going to take me a little while to finish this, but it's going to look great at the end because it's now got that little bit of white and also just a little texture as well, which is a bit of a bonus. Now you see now, you see the difference between the two. Now here I'm going to be, I'm going to come up and I'm not going to go right to the end because I want that to be slightly wanting at the top. So we get a shadow. Now all I did then was put that, dip that into water, that brush to loosen it off. Now see how nice that is. It doesn't need it, but if it did, you could also put some white in here, look. I mean, I don't because I've um, I've managed to keep that. But I think that looks rather good, doesn't it? Don't think we need any more, except what we do want to do is make that a little stronger now. So I can now go back in with my white and my very dark blue. And this time, I won't make that mistake again. Now, I've got a little boy, which I'm going to put in. I usually switch to a brown here, browny black. So, it's a little one here, which I want to put in. And the, and the, the rope or tie is coming from there, inside the boat. Which means we can now use a nice dark colour just to put a finishing touches on that because I like, I like the way that's finishing on a little bit more of a sharper point there. Now I'm being a bit fussy with this, but it's, um, it's good fun. And that will then tie it up to that. So we've got now our shape, fine. But what we haven't got here is, is any shadow in the water. So mix a bit of blue. And here we can put in just a bit of shadow. Use a Chinese white, which I use back here, I'm going to use that in another way. Again, especially in water, keep it agitated so it doesn't become too dry. That's just about right, that. And then we can just use it. Whoops, that's too. 
I have to do that again, won't I? But it, it's just sometimes a nice idea just to put a little bit, uh, whether that's going to work. It would work if I get the consistency just right. I might have to put some more water on this, uh, more Chinese white. But sometimes you can just put, look, see, a little bit of splash. I'd already suggested it, as you can see, but it's quite nice to put a little bit of ripple. Now another area, I can do, I do that after. What we can do here is put just a little bit of a splash here as well, just to suggest. And maybe in there. Yeah, it's only a small touch, but you may just, just be able to see that. And see a little little wave then. Lovely. Now I think that's come up very well. Very pleased with it. So uh, am I happy with this? I think I am. See we can just make that just a little more. Oh, that's better. Just play with it a little bit until you get it exactly what you want. And then I'm go, I really am going to leave it alone now, folks, because it's easy to spoil. But that has come up really well. So all it means means is you put your name on. Now let me just show you this too. I'll come close for this to show you. Now I would use, always use some of the colours you've been using in the picture. So I'm just agitating this black greeny, put a bit more green in there to make it a bit of blue. And you don't want to make a signature too prominent. But, but now I've got two choices. I can either put it there or there. Now I'm going to put it here. So make sure that it's high enough because if this is ever going to be framed, it will be framed, might just go inside that line. So you've got to make sure that you're above, but you don't want it too big. So let's see what we can do here. Many, many years ago, I made my signature much more simplistic. I was advised to do that because, first of all, if it was in its original, you wouldn't have understood anyway. But it makes it much more practical to be simplistic now. This is, and what it is, is what it is. I've seen some pretty awful signatures in my time. You see, that one is not that R of mine. Bradley hasn't come up very well. So let me show you again how we can just get over that. Just wet it, first of all, and dab it out. Right. Now, I'll give it a couple of minutes so I can explain to you a bit more about that. Yes, I made it simplistic because everybody can see it and understand it. Well, it should be all right. Let's have another go at that. See? Simple. Anyway, there we are. So uh, let me give you a better view of that. Now, there we are, the finished picture. I hope you've enjoyed that. I've certainly enjoyed doing it and it's lovely to get back to watercolour again after quite some time doing the pastel pencil. But I've used my pastel pencil techniques in the watercolour as I use my watercolour techniques in the pastel pencil. So we kind of look very familiar. But what I do love is those birds. Now that was a happy accident because had I not had those little spots in there, and I saw another one there but that flew away, um, if I hadn't had those spots in there, I probably never thought of putting birds in, but I always used to. Many, many years ago when I first did water, I always put birds in. And to be honest, you'd always see them anyway, wouldn't you? Anyway, it's a nice little finishing touch. 
I look forward to seeing you again on another watercolour picture very, very soon. Bye for now.